Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser from Modeling for Advantage and today is a first for the channel. We're going to have a go at an army review. So what we've got here is a 100 point Flames of War Berlin German army list. It is a Panther Tank Training Company HQ. Really interesting list. It has uh, access to some very cheap, very big tanks, but that is because the guys in them, the crew, are largely terrible. So top of the list is the headquarters of consisting of a single Panther. Panther is a fantastic vehicle, but late war, it's not as tough as you might think. With the front armor of 10, it's vulnerable to a very large number of Soviet vehicles. Um, but also the, the uh, American 76 armed um, Sherman is still a threat to Panther. So you can't just sort of run around the table with this thing. It is careful, its motivation is confident, its skill is veteran, which is something you're not gonna see throughout the rest of this list because this guy is actually a professional soldier. He's got the old hand rule and that allows other units in his formation that within six to use a tactics rating of four up. If you're used to playing Germans, you used to see your guys having a tactics rating of three up or better, and this guy can pass around a four up because the rest of the army is really poorly trained. Because, as I mentioned, this is from a tank training company. These guys were um, halfway through their training or whatever way through their training, but this is the last desperate days of the defense of the Reich. They've emptied the training schools and formed new kind of ersatz battalions and Kampfgruppe. So that panther costs 12 points, but next up is a platoon of three late panthers. And again, you can only take this as two or three panthers. It's 22 points for the three of them. Obviously, they've got the same combat stats in terms of their armor and their anti-tank rating, which is a solid 14, but their, um, their skill levels are quite different. They're aggressive, which means they hit on threes rather than fours. Their motivation is confident rather than veteran. And their skill is green. These guys are rookies. Skill checks on a five up means although they have the stormtrooper rule, because that's the German doctrine, you're not going to pass the first movement order, let alone the second. Even if they're with the commander, it's a four up. So it's kind of iffy about whether that's the way to go. But 22 points for three Panthers is cheap. But bearing in mind, and you'll see throughout this list though, that green rating means that that last panther is not gonna stand. I wouldn't take this as a two tank unit. Don't be, don't be distracted by that option because it's gonna fail its last stand check. Because this force has got a lot of heavy vehicles in it, I felt it needed something in the mid range. It needed to be able to put out more shots. So the Panzer fours are in here. There's a platoon of four of them for only 30 points. They've got the bazooka skirts and stormtrooper rule. But with only six front armor and an anti-tank rating of 11, for a late war medium tank, this is really not doing the business. And when you check the skill ratings, it gets worse. Again, it's hit on threes. Again, it's green. He does still have the protected ammo rule because that's the vehicle, right? So it does remount on a three plus, whereas his normal motivation is four. It's got the bazooka skirts, which I may have already mentioned. 13 points for four of them. Now the idea with those though is they can't risk being around early in the game. They've not got, don't let them get shot at. Panzer twos, well, it's a, from the training schools. That's why they're here. Uh, they're great, uh, dinky little vehicles, but these things have not been in service with the, with the here for some years now. But obviously they're there, they're in the training schools. So they, they took them into battle. In terms of the game though, this is a great cheeky little unit. It's only two points for the three vehicles. They still have the machine gun dice, you know, but with a front armor of three and an aggressive hit on threes, green and confident, they're pretty garbage, but they still have a tactical move of 10. So you can still move them around the board. Every shot taken against them wasn't a shot taken against something more serious. And late game, they might just be able to grab an objective for you because they will largely be ignored, I think. The two centimeter cannon is a joke though. It's got a halted rate of fire of two, great. 
but an anti tank power of five and a five up firepower, it even struggled to take out its own front armor, which is merely a three. Last, and by no means least, parts of the core force. And that's what I really like about this force. All of these units are part are integral to the mainline formation, which keeps your force morale strong. The Panzer Grenadier Training Platoon. So again, in the, in the training schools, there were Panzer Grenadiers, and they've joined these Panzer Divisions, or these Panzer Kampfgruppe. They are aggressive, and if you're used to playing Germans, you have no idea how bad infantry that are hit on threes are. Their motivation is confident, and their skill is green. They've still got three halted and two moving rate of fire, so if they get to shoot at somebody, they're just as good as they ever were, but under a light artillery bombardment, these guys just wilt. They just disappear because they hit so easily. It really is a big drop in quality. But the points reflect it. You get those uh, seven bases for a mere eight points. If there's a weakness in this list, I'd say it is the infantry because tanks can shoot it on fives, not sixes. And at this point in the war, most tanks have got a three up firepower and a lot of them are brutal. So you kind of direct fire artillery stuff like your Soviet SUs, just trash these guys. Whereas you so, if you're used to infantry just staying r ruggedly till the end of the game, the difference between a five and a six on a D6 is they hit literally twice as often. Then the support options. For 27 points, you get yourself a Tiger II, a King Tiger, a Royal Tiger training platoon. <laughs> So this is also aggressive and it is green. And what that mean, what that's gonna mean is if you lose the first one, the other one probably is gonna run. So you need to be careful. But you don't need to be that careful. You just need to make sure you keep your front armor to the enemy because it's got a front armor rating of 16, which is impervious to most every get weapon in the game. There are some that are gonna go through it, but not many. Side armor is eight though, and top armor is two. It's aggressive, confident, and green, like we discussed, and it's got a high velocity 88 with a 48 inch range, 17 anti-tank power, three up firepower. Great about these late war German tanks compared to the Soviets is the guns have not got so big. They've got high velocity, but they're not so big that it becomes two part ammunition, that they become slow rate of fire, you know, overworked, slow firing with a halted rate of fire of one, which you find a lot of the Soviet big vehicles have. This guy still kicks out the shots. And at 17 ounce tank power, it's gonna, it's gonna do some killing. 27 points for two of them, and they dominate the battlefield. Just don't get shot in the side or you lose the second one. Last of all is the Yag Tiger. Yag Tiger's great because the Yag Tiger is from a tank hunter platoon. It's an actual army unit. It's not from the training schools. So he's hit on fours. He's got 17 front armor, even better than the 18. Side armor is still eight though. He's careful hit on fours. He's confident. Four up motivation. His last stand, he's got the third right bonus, so he's on a three up, but his counter attack is poor. He's also a veteran, so he's got a three up skill. So this guy is 16 points for just the one. The gun is bigger. The gun is a 12.8 centimeter, which has still got a halted rate of fire of two, and to tank power of 18, two up firepower. But in terms of taking out infantry and things like that, it's got the brutal keyword and it's got the limitations of being forward firing and slow firing. He only has three machine gun dice though. So what this big tank, these really big ones are vulnerable to is being mobbed by infantry. This guy is not gonna pin assault in infantry because it only gets three dice. You can't get five pins out of three dice. Same with the tigers, there's a pair of them. I've got eight dice. So maybe that's what I think they're most vulnerable to. So those are your two support units. 43 points then in the support section is a big chunk of your force, but you had a lot of units in the main force. So the question to ask yourself is, how does this force work? How do you use it? How does it work best? I'm not saying this force is optimal. There's no AA in this force, which there definitely should be. And there's no artillery in this force. It, it is a list 
that is based more upon my interest in in trying out a different formation rather than a tournament winning list or anything and i think actually aircraft are probably some of the better ways of dealing with those really heavy vehicles if you are confronting an opponent that you know cannot beat your tanks except from the side because he doesn't have air aircraft or you know a very big anti-tank gun then you start the game with all of those heavy vehicles on the table and you keep the Panthers and the Panzer IVs off the table. You keep them off because they'll get shot up. You bring them in on, as reserves later, so there's been a lot of wasted opportunity. If, however, your super heavy vehicles, there is something he's vulnerable to, you might want to flip that tactic on its head in deployment and go the other way. But I've played two games with this force now, um, 200 point games, and my opponents are just, the, the, the King Tiger and the Yag Tiger, they're just terrifying to someone who doesn't have the tools to deal with them. The reality is they don't kick out enough shots. So the Panzer Fours end up being important, as, as crazy as it is, because in the late game, when there's half as many vehicles on the table, there's suddenly a thing that you'd rather not shoot at if you had a choice. A normal veteran tank platoon will just burst them in a single round of shooting at short range. The thing to watch out for with it though, with this, is although your heavy tanks are very good defensive units, your infantry is not. I played a game under an artillery bombardment and by turn four they were pretty much all dead. The artillery will kill them. So you can't kind of refuse a flank with just your infantry platoon. All right, that was a look at my German 100 point list for Bulge. Why don't you get down in the comments and tell me a little bit about what you think, the limitations of this list, the things that I should have taken, like artillery and anti-aircraft, for example, or tell me a little bit about yours. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content, like the video, maybe leave us a comment. Thank you.